Hello! Welcome to Schwarzanker TV. We are doing musky fishing on uh, Lake Bemidji in uh, the US of A. I want a musky! It's the difference between the modern age. You know, back in the day, people like Klaus would have been institutionalized. And nowadays, they're just mainstream right in the modern society. And there's hardly any, you can hardly tell. Do you mind if I turn into a tree, Joe? Well, it's day two. Yes, it did not turn out the way we want it to turn out. It never fails. The minute you're not paying attention, one of those stupid fish are gonna show up. We got a muskie in the boat. You caught a muskie. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome to uh, Bemidji, Lake Bemidji. Um, today, on today's episode, we're out tournament fishing for uh, muskie on uh, the Frank Schneider tournament. Together with my good friend, Joe Peterson from True Glide Lures. Hello. And um, it's an early start. Uh, it's on the fifth cast now. And we're right on time. What time is the major? Major is about 10.30. 10.30. Uh, we're pretty religious with muskie fishing here. Basically, moon up, moon down, uh, moon underfoot, moon overhead. Uh, these big fish, uh, for some reason for muskies, it trips their trigger. It's really the time when uh, you want to be on the water fishing for them. Uh, you can tell when there's a major or a minor, you won't see fish all day. And the second there's a moon up or moon down or some sort of a moon phase, all of a sudden you'll catch two, three fish right in a row. So it's a really important time period to be on the water. A lot of times these fish will follow a bait. They're kind of a, kind of a peculiar fish. They're really curious, they're almost like a cat. And they'll follow your bait in. Yeah. And they'll come, yeah, they'll come all the <laughs> way up to the boat. And a lot of times you can get them to go with a, we call it a figure eight, a lot of times it's just a big circle because big fish can't, uh, can't move that fast. So you want to big around the bait like this. And then you at least know if you have a fish following, if you do, you can convert that fish a lot of times into an eating fish. Or you can at least, if it brings in, if you bring a fish in, uh, you can kind of judge the mood of the fish and that helps you decide what kind of lures you want to use for later on or what speed or whatever it might be. So muskies, a uh, little bit different, at least here in the States, pike are a lot different than muskies. Um, I understand you guys have a little bit different strain in, in Europe, but the pike here, they see a boat and they'll blow away right away, about 10 feet away from the boat. They, they won't always follow a lure in. Muskies do not get spooked. They will follow lure around. Uh, they don't care if you move a lot of times. Those fish, you can get them to eat a lot of times at your feet, we call it. So just by doing this, we can get them to eat. Matter of fact, Klaus and I were up fishing uh, a couple weeks ago in Canada, and we had a muskie attack our trolling motor. So uh, we both heard a big clunk on the trolling motor. <laughs> yeah, and Klaus said, what's that? And I said, oh, I'm pretty sure a muskie just tried to eat our trolling motor. Yeah, some massive bite marks. Yeah, and sure enough, there's big bite marks on my trolling motor housing. So. These fish, uh, they pretty much think everything is food. So they, they're, they're an interesting fish. That's what makes them fun to fish for. They're the biggest and the baddest, that's for sure. To the leopard grass. This is generally where we, we stop for the most part. That last rock we call it elephant rock because we've caught so many big fish off that little rock right there. Yeah. You can see other difference, at least in the States, between muskies and pike. Muskies love topwaters. Pike, you don't catch a lot of pike on topwaters here. I watched uh, in the fall when the coots are little, uh, the little ducks, when they start migrating in the fall, there'll be a school of about a thousand coots. And you can watch, uh, if, you, if you're lucky, you can watch the muskies attack them. And they come and they'll hit them first and they don't try to eat them whole and they'll stun them. And then they come and they eat them head first. Really kind of interesting.
I just had a massive hit out there in the water when I was telling Joe about the sand <laughs> people of Bemidji, the mass murder that we met last night. Yoda. And uh, yeah, that's musky fishing. When you're not there, you get a bite. Every time. Every time. It never fails. The minute you're not paying attention, one of those stupid fish are gonna show up every time. We're not seeing a lot of action on the usual stuff, which are big double 13 blade spinner baits and top waters aren't working. The water's a lot, uh, a lot colder today. The big rainstorm came through and it's a lot, uh, lot murkier too. So we're gonna go a little bit deeper on these fish. Uh, with this, we can work really deep. It's got a lot of vibration to it. Um, the nice thing about the rubber baits too is on baits that aren't rubber, the hooks are clanging all the time. So the fish are a little bit, uh, a little bit shy, I guess you'd say. Um, sometimes rubber works better because there's no mechanical noise at all. So it's kind of a real natural, natural feel to the lateral line in the water. So we're gonna go down a little bit deeper, see if we can get them to come up on the rubber baits. Um, when the fishing is slow, a lot of times the rubber will save the day. So um, we'll see what we can do. A couple different versions uh, that we make, like a couple different sizes. I'm, I'm going for the big one because I always like the bigger baits, but kind of a smaller size, different shape. They have a little bit different action to them. Um, I know lots of European guys like the big paddle tails. This is the musky size paddle tail here. Um, again, a little, one of my creations with a hard head that snaps into it. Um, but again, a big bait that we'll probably throw a little bit later. I think Klaus is throwing one of his right now, so I'm going to go this tail and Klaus is going paddle tail, right Klaus? Yeah. So, we'll see if we can get it done with these. Yeah, so it uh, just lost a fish there, a really nice one. Uh, from what we could see, 45 inches at least, but probably a little bit bigger than that. Hit right at the boat as I was ripping the bait up, and that's not uncommon for rubber baits. When you get to the boat and you rip it up, a lot of times they'll come up and hit it right at the boat, and that one did just that. I could see it just had one hook through the little tiny skin on its uh, lip there. He did a big head shake right there, and the lure came right out. So um, that's one of the bad things about plastic baits or rubber baits. Um, it gets them to bite. But usually when you have to use rubber baits, they're not super active, so they're not really killing the bait. So he came up and he has hit it just really softly. If he really wanted to kill it, we probably would have had it in there. Um, anyway, he shook it and got off the boat and we're still in the spot. And it's not the major yet, so keep casting. I mean, we had two contacts so far. Yeah. I Both mean, on we've only been fishing for one and a half hours. So. Right. Many hours to go. So uh, Klaus talked a little bit about majors and minors, and um, I talked a little bit about them earlier today too. But uh, you know, even in the States, there's not a lot of guys who follow the majors and minors and the moon sequences. Now I'll tell you, for me, it really, really hit home and became almost like a religion for, for musky fishing. Um, when I was a judge boat for uh, this big tournament on Lake Vermilion here in the States, <clears throat> this tournament spanned this massive body of water. At the lake is absolutely huge. Uh, it goes on for tens of miles. and. Uh, Everyone had to report their fish in via, via ship to shore radio. So we knew when people were catching fish, they would all come in over the radio. And the entire day would go by with maybe a fish here, maybe a fish there. But the minute a major came, there'd be 10, 15, 20 fish caught all at the same time within a five minute period of time across the entire lake. Not just one area, there was rocks, there's weed fish, there's open water fish. They came from all over the lake and that would shut down again for uh, you know three hours or whatever in between the the periods to the next minor. And then the minor would come and there'd be a flurry again of activity and then nothing would happen again until the next major or minor would happen. Um, so for me, that really, really hit it home and I, I started paying more attention to it then because even then I didn't pay that much attention to it. Um, but now that I'm paying attention to it, obviously it, you still have to be on a good spot where there's a fish. You know, muskies are not a high density fish. 
um, but it's it's it works. So if you're not doing it and you live here in the states, do it. If you have a chance to check it out elsewhere, I would definitely recommend it. Um, I know for muskies at least, I can speak from experience that majors and minors, you want to be on the water and you want to be on the good spot at that point in time. Uh, the time now is about 12. Um, we had four contacts with muskies. Joe had one on and we're soon gonna, we're gonna fish for about 10, 15 minutes and then go for lunch to one of the awesome burger joints. <laughs> Uh, and then we go back on the water and, and after lunch we have six more hours for fishing. So hopefully we will uh, net, a, net a fish and get it on the board. What do you say, Joe? Sounds good to me. Awesome. I want a muskie! Bigger for sure. Red, red wine. Today we're fishing muskies where there are no muskies. Yeah, it's called According to the locals. non musky lake. Yep. Look, it's so many clouds on the sky. Have you seen them? It's so good. Uh, for lunch, I had a hamburger. Let's see, what did I have? I had a hamburger, a salad, and a delicious coffee, which I'm not quite done with yet. And a beer. Do you mind if I turn into a tree, Joe? That's the difference between the modern age. You know, back in the day, people like Klaus would have been institutionalized. And nowadays, they're just mainstreamed right in the modern society. And there's hardly any, you can hardly tell. I've heard that black is the best color for muskies. I never caught a muskie on a fucking black lure. <laughs> Having people in the boat that are good company is half the battle of muskie fishing. Are we gonna jump now? We might, let's do it. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got nothing usable off of that, did you? <laughs> it did. Uh, yeah. But we decided to go back to the area where we started this morning. And um, we raised one fish. Uh, I would say mid-30s, sortish. Yep. A small, small bugger. Came in fast and um, just took off. Yeah, we're going to go in shallow. We're just going to drift back over the spot. It's a big flat about three feet deep with spotty uh, weeds all over it. We're gonna go up and drift down, no electronics at all. Sometimes in the shallow water, these really big fish get really spooky if they have here any kind of uh, depth finders or trolling motors. So we're just gonna drift right over them, come back out, drift over again, and just keep doing that and see if we can get going. <coughs> awesome. Day two, yes it did not turn out the way we want it to turn out. We had a chance at a couple fish, but uh, ultimately didn't get anything in the boat. So we're heading back out. We had a real late night last night. We stayed out and tried to get a fish on tape at night. That didn't work out either. So we're back at it again after a couple hours of sleep. Let's we'll see if we can get one in the boat for you guys. Yeah, we gotta fucking, we gotta get a muskie tonight. Uh, today. Uh, it's better conditions, it's a little bit warmer, not so windy as yesterday, and our spirits are on the top of the world! Joe, we gotta do it! gonna get a fish this morning. You heard me. <laughs> you did. We got a muskie in the boat. You caught a muskie. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. Totally awesome. Uh, we're, awesome. Gonna, we're gonna get the bump board, the measuring board, because you don't wait muskies. Um, so we're gonna measure it and see how long she is. And uh, as always, 
there are some uh, some some difficulties. Yeah, as always. And and then we got to take a photo of it. Joe's gonna put the sticker on his hat. Uh, so we're in the game on the tournament. And uh, then we're gonna kiss it and release it. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Well, that's it. Uh, the tournament just ended about 10 minutes ago, so we're making our way back in. Uh, we got to go to the award ceremony tonight, see how everybody else did. Uh, we did put the one fish in the boat, and uh, the way the tournament works for that is uh, if you put one fish in the boat, you get uh, joined into a raffle to win a Triton boat. So um, there's always the opportunity to win a boat, which yeah. would be uh, always good. Well, so we uh. Yeah, get in the shop with him. Sure, come on, Dad. Yeah. You can be on TV. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, way cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's a family vacation. It's yeah. A, oh, for sure. Oh, oh. Well, my whole family here. Yeah. Good. There yeah. we go. Yeah. Hey, we uh. We ended up stopping for coffee. If you know Klaus, uh, coffee has got to be in the mix, and the same for me too. Um, but since we had to wrap things up, and we were one of the lakes that was furthest, uh, furthest away from the uh, registration zone, we got here a little bit late to uh, put our pictures downloaded to qualify for uh, the boat raffle. So we're out of the qualification. We didn't win the boat. Um, we still have a fish in the tournament, which is great. We have one on film, which I'm really happy with. Um, and I get to meet up with my dad and my brother, who just walked away a little bit, and a bunch of uh, old friends. Uh, here at the red, uh, here at the tournament headquarters at um, at uh, Northern Lights Casino, so things are great. You know, part of the fishing is is meeting up with all your your friends and your family. So I couldn't be happier than that. For sure. Yep. So uh, next time. Best fisherman. Oh, yeah. So uh, next time, uh, next time you watch Svazankar TV, you'll be watching this. Have a great one. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. 
Well guys, what, uh, we just got some really cool footage of a fish just after it eats. A lot of times it'll go up to the surface and kind of swim, push air down its stomach to help digest it, and then it heads back down to the depths. So, bastards. <laughs> Oh, I'm doing fine. Yeah, and uh, the thing they, at the at the uh, at the cottage, they had the leaderboard there, and you had your six fish labeled on there. I don't know why I didn't get my name on there with my 47 oh, and a half. Did. Yeah, I put it on there. You're it's really on good. there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, you're on yeah. there as well. Well, how about that? Oh, mm. way cool. We're famous now. We are. On top of the oh, world. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> Super good to see you, man. Oh, you got cool. me my brother. He's here somewhere, but he yeah. wandered off, so. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Hey, could have a better guy. He beat my muscle by one inch. <laughs> Boy, you got a 48 and a half. You're only a buck. Oh, yeah. hey, okay. oh film this. <laughs>